What is up you guys and of course as always welcome back to another episode of who was really better Now this week we're gonna cover a niche that I think is very good in leagues and something that is common in smoking OU and the lower tiers below it but as of right now, don't carve that niche. Um, they are usable in Smogon, but that's not going to be our main focus because in leagues where this Pokemon shines because of that niche. Off! I said that so many times right now. The Volt Switch Hit and Run strategy. Jolteon defined that back in Generation 4. While well, it's been around since Generation 1 and is the OG Electric Types, it's been the best Pokemon at that very role from the get go that it got it. And Bolt now introduced in this generation is doing roughly the same but have a different way of going about it so with that in mind we're gonna go of course go over their stats move pool and organ theme to find out which one of these two that really are better and as always we're going to go with the pokemon introduced first and that would be the evolution in jolteon now i should go without saying that electric types are a good defensive typing even though they tend to be rather frail in general with a few exceptions the resistance is quite nice, you know, electric, flying, and steel resist are great, and the weakness only to ground, yeah. Very easy to, of course, glue this to a team as it's defensively rather viable with other Pokemon. And of course, it does allow electric combination with other times to be very, very good, just because of those extra resistances. Hence why electric and flying is so great, so I just really want to have that covered. Now, it goes to Yoldeon, it's very, very defined what it can do. Low HP, low attack, low defense, they're all in the 60s, but special attack at 110, <laughs> special defense is a rather respectable 9 to 5, and a 130, I was gonna say 30, 30 base speed, that's incredible, there is really nothing like it, this is a Pokemon that represents the top 5 speediest Pokemon in the meta right now, and that's invaluable when it comes to actually using something like this in a league, because you more often than not actually own the speeds here, which is something that pressures teams naturally. When it comes to abilities, both are actually quite viable with Volt Absorb, which makes you immune to electric types and you recover some HP, which can actually just stop other electric types. I've used actually Jolteon so many times in actually Generation 7 to both stop Thunderous and uh, Tabu Koko. It fills this role so naturally and it makes this Pokemon so good because of that. Um, another aspect is the quick feed, which is something I think is more viable this generation, but it also is, as I said before, viable leagues, because once your status, you actually get double the speed. This means that you can run a modest set and you know, increase your damage output quite nicely and naturally and still outspeed most of the things. This is a very good add response to any type of weather teams, for example, or which there are no po other Pokemon at 130 speed that still boosts your speed. Whereas Qt is the closest to it, and quite frankly, it being able to deal with it head-on in rain is... Yeah, that's that's a very, very cool niche to kind of own. Uh, so overall, Jolteon, very defined. Hit and runner, hurts, and get out fast. Volt Switch is invaluable for it, and uh, this is a Pokemon you should not allow to switch in on the first turn trying to soak a hit. Or, of course, always make sure this Pokemon goes first and get out of this bad situation. This Pokemon absolutely defined the Volt Switch strategy and the revenge killing aspect, and which is something that makes Jolteon just so good as a as a concept, really. But as always, what defines a Pokemon's main niche and strength are always in its move pool. So let's talk about that for a little bit. So Jolteon kind of had it rough when it comes to its move pool, and the reason for that is, well, quite frankly, having seven generations behind it and not have a larger move pool than this. Yeah, it does kind of work in its disfavor, if anything, but at the same time, it does get a lot of moves that are kind of cool. Um, while well, all not relevant, which I won't cover all of them, but since, like I said, they aren't necessarily all that viable, uh, it does get the necessary stab moves in Electro Ball, Discharge, Thunderbolt, Thunder, and it got decent filler moves in Shadow Ball, Hyper Voice, even Hyper Beam, I can't rely on that, uh, but also. Weather Ball this generation, which is great for this Pokemon. It does allow it to work in Rain Teams and Sun Team. And um, Rain Teams where I think it shines the most because of the extra damage output. And Electric and Water is actually a fair combination. Really aren't necessarily all that much that does deal with that naturally. It also gets Stored Power. It's not the best move at all. But if you're going for a Gigantamax strategy, this could be a, you know, a fair filler at best. And uh, it should always be considered. 
Uh, besides that, it can wish pass, which is quite alright. You can also do the reflect and light screen combination, so you can go for a light clay variant and set up screens, and that could always be kind of nice. You also could go for an angel with the weakness policy or focus energy to boost yourself for critical hits. Uh, but basically, that's it. Like we have a lot of moves here, and feel free to read through them. But as you guys can see, it's really shallow. Viability wise, it's really, really, really slim. Um, you get I think two ways of setup and work up and agility and also have toxic and jaunt to be able to stand or something. Jaunt could be workable. Uh, the, the potential set or you know switch out or whatnot. Even substitute jaunt can be a really nice strategy. Um, but overall, this Pokemon is a Pokemon that's kind of struggle. Luckily, its electric fillers are what matters here, and electric types aren't all well that easily, which is why electric type offensively is so good as ground types. It's the only real thing that pushes this Pokemon back. However, one thing that really, really ruins this Pokemon somewhat is uh, it got rid of Signal Beam, which makes grass types all the better. Signal Beam is not a part of the game anymore, it should always be considered as a weakness for this Pokemon, as it does allow grass types to actually check this Pokemon naturally. Which they couldn't do before either because of hidden power. This Pokemon always carry hidden power ice or grass depending on the meta, but usually ice. So while all of these aspects do nerf this Pokemon somewhat when it comes to Smogon, in leagues it still works roughly the same as it did before. The ability in Quick Feet do allow it to beat other weather teams, which is something to always keep in mind. And it always is able, due to the speed tier, to pipe it around and force the switches and really own the speed tier. Which is something that's not only invaluable, but pressures team naturally. So, yes, it's weaker, but the things it does well, it still does. So, which is something that makes Jolteon one of the greatest Pokemon in lower tier to actually act as team. Because the speed tier, to get it with a high special attack, do pressure teams naturally. And it's a very rare trait to see. So, yeah, it's a... Really decent Pokemon, yeah, it got weaker this generation. So what does Boltzham bring to the table? Well, defensively, it is absolutely weaker than Jolteon. Um, 69 HP is higher, but unfortunately we have a 60 split on both defense and special defense, so it's just as physically bulky as Jolteon. But special defense wise, yeah, this guy will take a hard hit no matter how you do it. And it's something that actually makes Jolteon more reliable in switching in certain situations, it's always worth keeping in mind. However, Boltown do reward you in other ways as it is physically orientated, this means it has a physical output of 90 base attack, which while it is low, it is something to still keep in mind because of its abilities. Sending special attack is lowered at 90, however, since I said it was physical, it's going to stay physical. And the speed tier is at 121, so it's slower than Jolteon, but at the same time, really aren't that many above these speeds here, so yeah, Jolteon will hit fast and hit you hard first, surely, but Boltown, depending on the matchup, are very likely to do the same anyway, so does it really matter? Probably not, Boltown really has a high and fair speed here. When it comes to abilities, it actually does split it in two types of all ability, where competitive would boost your special attack by two if you are lowered by any stat. I feel that's super respectable to have, as that's something that allows a Pokemon to actually uh, force potential switches, and of course, let's say you have a Pokemon with Intimidate, all of a sudden, oh, that Volt Switch is going to hurt all the more, and uh, then you have Strong Jaw, which is this Pokemon's probably main niche, as it does give you a stab boost to your Jaw moves, or I was say, Bite moves, and this Pokemon gets it, it gets all the Bite moves, and it's something that makes this Pokemon really, really, really scary to fend off against. And uh, yeah, with that said, I mean, we, we're clearly going to talk about its move pool. Is it as shallow as a Jolteon? Probably, most likely. <laughs> so one thing that always are worth noting here and keep in mind is that Bolthound's special pool is nowhere near as vast as Jolteon's. And remember, Jolteon's move pool? Shallow. This guy has it too, it's really shallow. And uh, yes, he gets all the stabs that are worth keeping in mind, but as tenant, not a special attack, you kind of have to bring something to the table. And this guy don't do that. We have all the funders, you know, Thunderbolt, Volt Switch, um, Electro Ball, and what is that? The Early Impulse is going to say, but no, Discharge. Uh, and then when it comes to filler moves, we don't have a Shadow Ball like that. We have Snarl, we have Hyper Voice, and uh, we don't have even a Weather Ball. So, in, in theory, Bolt Sound is absolutely worse than Jolteon, especially. Luckily, its abilities do complement the move pulls it gets, which is in this, its strong jaw. Because when we talk about the strong jaw, it all kind of falls to place. 
because we have Byte, Crunch, Thunderfang, which is basically making wild charts, well, theoretically weaker at least, since Thunderfang is, all things considered, it's getting a fair boost by the strong jaw and making it almost as strong as wild charge and you don't risk the residual damage in wild charge and consider your low HP, yeah, always, always go for Thunder Fang with this Pokemon. Uh, besides that, it also gets Psychic Fangs, it gets Fire Fang, and even gets Flame Charge to be able to boost its speed, which is kind of nice. It actually is quite <laughs> quite cool for the Pokemon to get that. And um, other filler moves to keep in mind are Play Rough and Nussle, which makes basically any type of magic bouncer who fear the Thunder Wave get paralyzed anyway. So, hey, kudos. I think that's kind of cool on it. And or is even a get, get double ledge, which you shouldn't use either. <laughs> and when it comes to setup moves, we have uh, agility and howl, which is great. But this Pokemon also gets bulk up. This means that you can potentially run a Sugarberry variant of uh, Bolt Hound and bulk up to be able to get yourself to a fair offensive stat and then dish out the damage. If it is one thing I think this Pokemon struggle with, it is that it unfortunately didn't get Ice Fang. I think that would help this Pokemon quite a lot. Because it does basically means that yes, ground types do fend off this Pokemon still kind of nicely, and since ground types are usually physically offensive, it, or and physically defensive that is, this also means that yeah, he dish out damage, but at a cost. So it can't volt switch against them clearly. It can't pivot around them, and of course, it will lose versus them. But overall, I think the move pool on Bolt Hunt is phenomenal. We have so few physical electric types that works, and this is probably the first time I feel. It doesn't struggle. It doesn't have like Luxray or Electivire where it's a defined niche that it can do stuff but aren't speedy enough to pull this off. This one is both speedy and offensively orientated, which makes it probably the best physical electric type so far, if we don't count their aura, clearly. So overall, I think Bolton is great. It does struggle, but it have very strong niches to fill the roles. In a league aspect, it is invaluable because of these niches. So I really want to sugarcoat this at all. Look, Jolteon has its merits, it is very very invaluable in leagues because of the niche that actually gets Wither Ball and it can actually beat other Wither teams because of its incredible speed here to get it with Quick Feet and it shakes other electric type really really efficiently. But there is where it all ends, like, <sighs> it all boils down to one thing, they nerfed Jolteon so badly this generation, losing Signal Beam makes sure that it absolutely get, can't beat Grass types naturally. And losing hidden powers means that you know the speed turn being able to revenge kill with stuff is not no longer an aspect. It can't pull those off, at least not in that reliability. While Bolt Hound actually does two things right. First and foremost, it can deal with a plethora of matchup because of its move pool, but it also introduced a new element to electric types that hasn't been there before: a speedy physical electric type. Yes, we had Pokemon before that has been viable in essence, but they always fallen short because of one other reason. It often is not speed enough, barring Serora. Bolt Hound solves this and has ability to complement its move pool, and it just pressures teams better than Jolteon ever could do. So I'm happy that Bolt Hound is going to introduce, as at the same time I feel that I am so frustrated that Jolteon got nerfed so badly because it does suffer for it. Uh, but overall, I mean, Bolt Town is a great implementation and inclusion to the electric type family, and I'm very happy to see that uh, Game Freak and Pokemon overall actually allow physical electrics to naturally be defined and pressure Pokemon as well. Um, that it's such a rare case. I think there are four or five really viable electric types, and consider the families, you know, over their 60s and in inclusions, that says something. It's incredible to see a Pokemon like this introduced, and uh, I really hope to see more of them. But as of right now, Bolt Hound is really great, and I encourage you guys to use it more so in Ali because of its broad move pool. It does pressure teams so naturally, and 121 speed, yeah, it makes it all the better. So with that said, I really hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and as always, you know, do tell me what you think about these two Pokemon. What do you feel about Jolteon? <laughs> the, the Suffer from Grace, and of course the new inclusion in Bolt Hound. And uh, join us next week, of course, for this matchup.